purchase more storage from your account. Praise God as we certainly thank him on this morning. I'm just mindful that the 23rd number of Psalm tells us that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. So again, we thank God for the blessed assurance that is found in his word. We thank him for this first Sunday of the month of October, October the fourth year of our Lord, 2020. We thank him again for this day that he has made for us to rejoice and be glad in. For we know that weeping may endure for a night, but we thank God for the joy that comes in the morning. I thank God for each and every one of you that have tuned in on today, that have dialed in. Uh, again, we thank God for this is his doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. <clears throat> I thank you for the opportunity to come before you. I pray God's leadership, that he would touch these lips, that they might be his very oracle. So we ask you right now, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would forgive us for our trespasses, our thoughts, our words, our deeds, the things that we may do that are not pleasing in your eyesight. We continually ask you to create in us a clean heart and renew your Holy Spirit within us. Help us to be all that you would have us to be and enable us to do the thing that you have called each and every one of us to do. I pray that you would anoint these lips of clay, that they may be your very oracle, and that we that have ears, let us all hear what your Holy Spirit is saying to the church on today. Father God, we are continually praying for souls to be saved, lives to be changed, your Holy Spirit set free in our lives, broken relationships restored, prison doors open, bodies healed, finances in abundance, not by our might nor by our power, but by your Holy Spirit. We will be careful in all that we do that all glory, all honor, and all praise comes back to you. We continually plead the blood of Jesus, Father God, against this COVID-19 coronavirus. And we thank you right now, Father God, that we know you as the God who heals, Jehovah Rophi. And we're praying right now, Father God, for the heads of state, the leaders of this country, Father God, that you will protect them, touch their hearts, their minds, their souls, their spirit, turn them all towards you. And then we that find ourselves in whatever leadership, Father God, we pray that we will be the leaders that you have called each and every one of us to do. So touch all of our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirits. Turn us all towards you that we might be with one accord. We thank you for the children as we lift them up, but we recognize that they are the future. We thank you for your hedge of protection around them. We thank you for your angels you give charge over each and every one of us to keep us from danger seen and unseen. And then we thank you most of all for your precious son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, blood that was shed to cover us, to keep us, to cleanse us, to empower us. And we thank you right now, Father God. We pray for each and every household that is tuned in, the family, the friends, the loved ones, and the extensions thereof, Father God. And we pray most of all that your will will be done as we pray the prayer you gave your disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let every heart say, Amen. Amen and amen. I thank God for his word on today. 
It's going to come from the book of Peter, 1 Peter, and chapter 5. Again, I thank God this is a letter from, from Peter, and we recognize Peter as the disciple, uh, again, who told Jesus, I love you more than all of these. But when push came to shove, Peter did turn away and deny his Lord. But when Jesus came back, he did restore Peter back to fellowship with the disciples, back to fellowship with himself, and then gave Peter a great assignment. And Peter, because he had fallen and was restored, he felt a great responsibility to his Lord. And again, he did carry out that assignment and went on to do great things. So I thank God that that is encouragement for us all because we don't always get it right, but we thank God that he is a loving God, he is a forgiving God, and he will give us another chance. So we thank God when he wakes us up in the morning that he's given us another opportunity to yet get it right. So I thank God for each and every one of you. I thank you for his word that's found in 1 Peter chapter 5. I'm going to read into your hearing. I will read into your hearing uh, verse 12 through verse 14. Verse 12 through 14. And this is listed in the New Living Translation of the Bible as Peter's final greeting. Amen. From 1 Peter, the book of 1 Peter. And the word of God declares, I have written and sent this letter, this short letter, to you with the help of Silas, whom I commend to you as a faithful brother. My purpose in writing is to encourage you and assure you that what you are experiencing is truly part of God's grace for you. Stand firm in this grace. Verse 13 declares, your sister church here in Babylon sends you greetings. And so does my son, Mark. Verse 14 declares, greet each other with a kiss of love. And finally, peace be with all of you who are in Christ. And that's what I want to focus on on this morning. Peace be with all of you who are in Christ. Is there anybody tuned in on today that desires to have peace in their lives today? Peace in their lives, in their family, at their house, in your health, in your strength, in your finances, your relationships. Is there anybody that desires to have peace on the job, in the community? Peace in all situations that you may encounter. Well, I pray on today and our theme is, may God give peace to all of you that believe in Christ Jesus. And I want to emphasize, may God give peace to all of you that believe in Christ Jesus. And I know we can go about doing things and, 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 and trying to set uh, things in place to have peace in our lives, peace in our household and our family, but there's nothing like the peace of God. The shalom of God, the wholeness of God, the peace that I give. As Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. Amen. That the world can't give you this peace. And when God gives you this peace, which is fruit of his Holy Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, temperance, meekness, goodness, faith. The Bible says against such there is no law. When God grants you his peace, then you have peace in all situations whatever you're going through. But I thank God, as Peter said, finally, before uh, he began to let those last few verses of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 12 through 14, he said, finally, which denotes that he must have said something before he got to that point. So not to go back through the whole book of 1 Peter, but just 1 Peter chapter 5 in general. And again, I thank God because God had given Peter such a great assignment. And then Peter is sharing what, what thus says the Lord. And I want to share with it with each and every one of us on today that we might be with one accord. As Peter gives advice to the elders and the young men in the church, verse one declares, and now a word to you who are elders in the churches. An elder simply means older. In past time, the elders or the older persons 
were given respect just because of their age, because of what they had been through. And the wise elders were given positions of great honor, even positions of authority, the wise elders. Peter said, I too am an elder and a witness to the sufferings of Christ. And again, we, we recognize, amen, when you become a witness, that means you've seen something. You've been through something. You understand what's going on. So uh, uh, again, I, I just see a verse in the Bible that says, I, I have seen, therefore I believe. And again, we know that, that Thomas, doubting Thomas said, I, I, my Lord and, and my Savior, and my Lord and my God, and, and, and Jesus told him, you blessed because you've seen, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. So again, may God give peace to all of us that believe that believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that have made Jesus your Lord and your Savior. Peace to all those that believe on today. He said, I too will share in his glory when he is revealed to the world. As a fellow elder, I appeal to you. And again, I thank God that, uh, as David said, I've seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Therefore, I'm able to testify that if it had not been the Lord on my side. Verse two declares, care for the flock of God, that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, as Peter's talking to the elders and the, and the young men in the church, those that are up and coming. He says, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Do what God said, not for what you can get out of it, but because you eager to serve God in spirit and in truth, because you anxious to do God's will. And, and even as I look at the, the flock at the church, amen, I think of the flock of my household, my family, those that are around me. And if, if I'm the supervisor on the job, those that are under me, as I just, just want to Put this into the today's turn. Those that look up to you as, as because you are in a position of authority. You are in a position of respect, a position of power. Then you must do it not grudgingly, not for what you can get out of it, but because you eager to serve God. That's why the Bible says serve heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. So I don't even see it as a job anymore. I see it as an assignment because you anxious to do God's will, not for filthy lucre, not for the love of money. Paul said in Philippians 4 and 17, I don't personally desire a gift. I'm not personally looking for a gift, but I desire that you have fruit in your account. Hmm? For he said, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So even when you're compelled to give, it's, it's, you're not giving as unto me, as unto the pastor. You give as unto the Lord because God takes great care of me and my household. Regardless of how much anybody gives, God still takes care of us. May God give peace to all of you, even in what's being said. May God give peace to all of you that believe in Christ Jesus. God gives seed to the sower. Don't be deceived. Whatever you sow, that shall you also reap. So God said, feed the flock of God that's been assigned to you. You make sure they eat right. You make sure they eat the word of God, the bread of life. Feed God's people. Feed God's sheep. And that's what he told Peter because he, when Peter said, I love you more than all these, he said, before the rooster crows twice, you're going to deny me thrice. You're going to deny me three times. And Peter did that as he was warming the hand, warming his hands by the fire, as his Lord and Savior was being marched from judgment hall to judgment hall, being persecuted, being slapped around, being beat on, being spit on, having a crown of thorns placed on his head. Jesus denied him. And when he denied him that third time, he got he caught eye contact with his Lord and Savior. And the Bible says he felt very sorrowful and he went away with a defeated 
status and a defeated attitude. But again, we thank God as we read in this letter of Peter, we know that our Lord and Savior restored him. But when he restored, restored Peter as, as he was resurrected and he came back and he was eating with the disciples before he ascended, and he looked at Peter and said, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. He said, feed my sheep. The Bible says he waited a little while, said it again, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. He said, well, feed my lambs. He waited a little while longer, said, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. You know all things, so you know I love you. He said, then feed my sheep. And I just believe because Peter had denied him three times, he gave Peter the opportunity three times to say that he loves him. He said, if you love me, then feed my sheep. So because he was, had restored Peter and was in the process of restoring Peter, he gave Peter great responsibility, and Peter took his responsibility very seriously. And even as the under-shepherd at Open Door Ministries, I take my responsibility very seriously. Yes, Lord. As an under shepherd to God. And I pray that each and every pastor, each and every leader, for you to preach at your house, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, I pray that you would take your job very seriously. Hmm. My assignment, not my job, my assignment is to feed God's sheep. Our assignment is to look out for our household. I'm going to say assignment because I don't want to look at it as a job because sometimes I might not feel like going to work. But when I get an assignment, it takes some of the pressure off, some of the stress off. Amen. But verse three declares, don't lord it over the people assigned to your care. And I'm just going to put it in today's term. Don't bully God's sheep, hmm? but lead them by your own good example, your own good example. Amen. Amen. Lead by example. Again, we recognize that we'd rather see a good word, see a good sermon than hear one. Amen. None of this don't do as I do, but do as I say do. Yeah, because I know you're watching anyway. So it's good if you can do as I do as I lead by a good example. Amen. As we lead as elders, as leaders by a good example. Amen. 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 Verse four says, and when the great shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of never ending glory and honor. God's going to bless you. Don't wait for man to bless you. God's going to bless you mm. in such a way that uh, man, that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard, neither has it entered into your heart. The things that God has prepared for they that love him. Do you love him on today? Do you believe in him on today? Do you believe the word on today? Then may God give peace to all of you that are in Christ Jesus. All of you that believe in Christ Jesus. Verse five says, in the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. You who are younger, accept the authority of the elders. Accept the authority of the leaders. Accept the authority of your mother. Accept the authority of your father. Accept it. Hmm? Respect to the elders. Hmm? And all of you dress or clothe yourself in humility as you relate one to another. Again, I'm still in 1 Peter chapter 5. Clothe yourselves with humility. That means put on humility as a garment. Recognize, humble yourself huh? under the mighty hand of God, James says. Dress yourself, close yourself in humility. Both young and old must be humble and serve one another. Young people should follow the leadership of wise elders. I'm not just going to say follow everybody that's older than you. Follow the leadership of wise elders hmm? who should lead by example. If I'm wise in my old age, I, mean, I should understand that the younger people are watching me and I should be ready and willing to lead them by example. Simply put, respect your elders. Hmm? We as elders must listen also to the young people and be humble enough to admit that we can learn from them as well. And this is so evident in today's day and time 
with the uh, information and technology age, when working these computers and cell phones and all these things, it's just it's just like like natural it comes natural for the young people because they've mm-hmm. grown up with these things, and we as elders are trying to adapt to them. Mm-hmm. So, and speaking from personal experience. I need the young people. I need each and every one of you because without you, I wouldn't be on Facebook Live or uh, 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 or uh, with YouTube or any of those things that have been afforded to me. And again, I thank God, amen, for the young people right here in my household. My daughter helps me out quite a bit. And again, I, I just want to stop and say thank you right there. I thank God for my wife, my help me. She does all that. She can, amen, and we recognize that we're in this together because the message just told us not too long ago that teamwork makes the dream work. Praise God. Praise God. Respect your elders. We can learn from them. Mm-hmm. and We as elders can learn from the young people as well. But then we all need and can learn from each other. Regardless of our position or our status, we can learn something from each other. May God give peace to all of you that believe this word on today. For the word of God declares, for God opposes, he resists the proud, in verse five, but he gives more grace to the humble. God resists the proud. He resists those that think they can do it themselves. He resists those that are all puffed up. For we know that Satan got puffed up and caused a war in heaven. So God resists the proud. But he gives more grace to the humble. Verse 6 says, so humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Humble yourself, bow down, worship God, honor God. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And at the right time, in due season, he will honor you. He will lift you up in honor. He will exalt you in due season at just the right time. I woke up as my radio was playing this morning. I had it set to come on gospel to wake me up. And I heard the Williams brothers saying, he may not come when you want him. But when he does, he's right on time. So at the right time, and God knows when it's the right time. Huh? As Peter said, in, in due season, Amen. the King James said, he'll, he will exalt you. He will lift you up. But may God give you the peace to wait. Amen. Hmm? May God give you that peace to all that believe in Jesus Christ, to all that are in Jesus Christ. May God give you the peace, the patience to wait. Mm-hmm. Verse 7 declares, Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Cast your Jesus said, cast your cares on me, for I care for you. Peter said, cast all your worries and cares to God. Give them all to God, for he cares about you. It's good to know that God cares about you. That ought to give you some peace right there to know that God cares. You know, because he cares, that means if you need something or, or, or you desire something or, or he's in the position and he will do something about it because he cares the same way we do for one another because we care, because we have compassion. But verse eight says, stay alert. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. When Peter says stay alert, I mean, he, 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 he's mindful how quick he had fallen away after the night before he said, I love you more than all of these. And the very next night, he, huh, he got so bad. They said, we know you're one of his followers because you talk just like him. And Peter changed his speech and began to curse because he didn't want to be identified with his Lord and Savior. So he knows how quick we can get caught up. So he says, stay alert. Come on, hallelujah. Don't be surprised. Hmm. Don't get caught off guard. Huh, watch out for your great enemy. Don't take the devil lightly. Your great enemy, the devil, he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And we know that he's most likely to devour those that are weak, those that are strayed away, those that find themselves alone. That's why it's good not to forsake the assembly of yourself, even with your family even with your friends, especially with the household of faith, especially with the believers on today, 
especially in this day and time with all this going on, it's good to get with the believers to encourage one another. May God give peace to all of you that believe. The devil feeds on fear, but God has not given us the spirit of fear. So stop giving the devil so much credit. Stop giving the devil so much do. Everything that's going on is the devil's fault. Hmm? Some things we brought on ourselves. We won't blame it on the devil. The devil made me do it. Well, but I say again, may the peace of God be with you that believe in Christ Jesus. The peace of God to understand that if he can restore Peter, he can restore you. If he can save a wretch like me, he can save you. I thank God for his grace, his amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. Verse 9, Peter tells us to stand firm against him. Stand firm against the devil and be strong in your faith. Stand strong in your faith. Knowing that in due time, in your season, God is going to lift you up out of the muck, out of the mire, out of the clay, out of the sin, out of whatever it is. Even if it's health issues, in due time, God will lift you up. Hmm? So stand strong in your faith. Don't waver. Don't go back and forth. Hmm, the Bible says that our faith is impossible to please that God is and that God is a reward of us that diligently seek him but we have to believe do you believe on today mm -hmm. then may God give peace to all of you that believe stand firm in your faith without wavering and without doubting do you believe the word of God on today remember Peter saying in verse 9 remember that your family of believers all over the world, the family of believers all over the world, and I thank God for Open Door Ministry, a faith-based ministry where people matter, focuses on the whole body, the whole body of Christ. That's the believers all over the world. And Jesus is the door. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. Even with the coronavirus, it's all over the world. Health issues all over the world. Financial issues all over the world. Disobedience all over the world. Huh? Oppression all over the world. You're not going through anything that's not uncommon to man. But God said he will make a way of escape. And we know that way as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for he is the way, the truth, and the life. May God give peace to all of you who are in Christ Jesus, all of you who believe in Christ Jesus, all of you who hear the word on this morning and hearken to the word, which means listen with the intention of doing what thus says the Lord. Your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. So what makes you so special? We all going through the same thing. What about your neighbor and their affliction? Huh? When Jesus was asked, what is the greatest of all the commandments? He said, you know what it is when you ask me, before you ask. But since you ask, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to remind you that you would love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, and all of your strength. And he said, I'm going to tell you what the second greatest is since we on the subject. That you would love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is important on today. Amen. As you recognize the whole family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. Then maybe I ought to take time to pray for my neighbor. Huh? What about my neighbor and their affliction? Hmm? And I bring that up because as Job went through all Job went through, when God told him to pray for his friends, hmm. huh? The Bible says that as Job had went through all he went through, lost all he had, even his health, lost his children, lost his cattle, lost everything, his house, everything. In a matter of hours, he lost everything. The Bible said before that, he was the wealthiest man in the land. He lost everything. And as he sat there covered with sores from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet and his 
Friends didn't know what to say for seven days. They sat there with him in silence. Finally, they began to speak up and tell him, you must have made God angry. God must be displeased with you. And Job hadn't did a thing. But God understood the faith of Job, the patience of Job to wait on God. For he said, all the days of my appointed time while I wait till my change comes. He knew his change was going to come. It was a matter of time. God told him to pray for your friends. The Bible says that Job began to pray for his friends. God exonerated him. God restored him. God gave him back double all that he had. And I thank God, amen, for the testimony of Job, the patience of Job, the faith of Job. The Bible says God restored him double for his trouble. And I pray on today that he would give you triple for your trials. Verse 10 says, in his kindness, in God's kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. In his kindness, he didn't have to do it, but I'm so glad that he did. He didn't have to love us like he did, but he did. And I say thank you. He didn't have to save us. He didn't have to heal us. He didn't have to deliver us in his kindness. He called you to share in his eternal glory. Hmm. Paul said I'm, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Yeah, there's fellowship in recognizing the suffering of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and knowing that we too are going to suffer. So in verse 10, Peter says, so after you have suffered a little while, a little while, since we're on the subject, I wouldn't dare compare my suffering to that of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For I have not yet resisted the blood, as the Hebrew writer says. I haven't shed any blood for the cause of Christ. Hmm? But I recognize I'm going to go through some things, but I'm not going to compare it to my Lord and Savior being nailed to a tree. Hmm? May the peace of God be with you in what I'm saying right now. For he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, the things we do wrong, the things we've done wrong. Yes, the chastisement, the punishment for our sins was laid upon him, but hallelujah, by his stripes, by his beatings, we're healed. Mm -hmm. Hmm? So this minor suffering, this minor, I say minor as compared to what our Lord and Savior went through on our behalf. Mm -hmm. This minor suffering, as Paul said, that we experience is nothing to be compared to God's glory, which shall be revealed. Yes, yes. Hmm? This trouble is not going to last always. May the peace of God be with you that believe in Christ Jesus. So Peter said, after you suffer a little while, you're going to suffer. We're going to suffer. But after we suffer a little while, this present suffering, it's not how is it's not the fact that you suffer, but it's how you go through your suffering. It's not the fact that you have a situation, it's how you go through your situation, how you handle your situation. Come on, come on, Lord. Peter says, stand firm in the faith. Stand firm in the faith. Stand firm in the face of your trial, in the face of your tribulation, as you submit yourself to God, resist the devil. Stand firm against the devil. Stand firm against the adversary. Stand firm against the health issue. Stand firm against the financial issue. Stand firm against the broken relationship. Stand firm against the loss of a job. Stand firm. Yes. Hmm? After you suffered a little while, he will, he will, he will restore you. God will restore you as he restored Job, as he restored Peter, as he restored me. God will restore you. God is no respecter of person. He will support you. That means he'll hold you up. Now to him who's able to keep you from falling. He'll, su he'll support you. He'll sustain you. Huh? Peter said he'll strengthen you. Huh? Even if you find yourself weak after all you've gone through, God will strengthen you. As he restores you. Yes. Huh? Yes. I can do all things through Christ, yes. which strengthens me. He says, and he will place you on a firm foundation. Yes. That foundation is the solid rock called our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 
and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Nothing shall by any means harm you. Nothing shall be able to separate you from the love of God, which is for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Verse 11 says, all power to him forever. Amen. Do you believe the word you've heard on today? Hmm? Then as we get to where we started, verse 12, Peter's final greeting. He says, I have written and sent this short letter to you with the help of Silas, whom I commend as a faithful brother. It's nothing like somebody calling you faithful, recognizing you as somebody that's faithful, faithful to the ministry, faithful to the family, faithful, a faithful friend. Huh? The Bible says, behold, a white horse and he that set up on him was called faithful and true. It's nothing like being faithful. Yes, Lord. You can be counted on. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you. Mm. A faithful brother in the gospel. Yes, Lord. A faithful brother, a faithful sister in the service to Christ. Faithful in your service to the kingdom of God, mm. to the work of God. Mm. So Peter said, and I say on today by the word of God. Yes, sir. My purpose Peter said, my purpose in writing is to encourage you. My purpose in sharing what Peter has written is to encourage you and to assure you that what you are experiencing is truly part of God's grace for you. Huh? The Bible says it's by grace that we are saved through faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, not by our works that we can brag about, but by God's grace. God's grace is when God allows us to have things that we don't deserve. Mm. His mercy is when we don't get what we deserve. Mm. But his grace is when he allows us to have things that we don't deserve at all. And I'm talking mm. about good things. Yeah, huh? Like his salvation, yes, Lord. his healing power, yes, his sustaining Lord. power, his restoration power, his strength. Huh? Mm -hmm. The fact that he can pull you up out of the muck and the mire and place your feet on that solid rock mm -hmm. called Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Yes, Lord. You, what you're experiencing is truly part of God's grace for you. Mm -hmm. What you're going through is for you. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Yes, what we all go through, we all have our own suffering, our own aches, our own pains, our own things that we go through. But it's nothing to be compared to the eternal way to glory that God has waiting on us who make it through to the other side. Amen. God's grace is for your life. Huh? Paul said God's grace is sufficient. He said God's strength is made perfect in my weakness. When I'm going through and I get down low enough, I have no way to look except up. I have nothing else to do but to call on the name of Jesus. As things get so bad, I can't help but call on him. And it's good to know that when I call on him, he's right there to answer. He will answer. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. He says, ask, it'll be given. Seek, you'll find, knock, and the door shall be opened. Jesus said, I am the door for the sheep. And all that enter by me will be safe and find pasture. Yet yeah, a thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I'm come that you may have life and that more abundantly. So stand firm in this grace, mm -hmm. Peter said, the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Hmm? God's grace is sufficient yes, for his God's strength is perfected in our weakness. Yes, the weaker we admit that we are, the stronger God's grace can hold us mm -hmm. and help us to stand yes. firm. That God be glorified, that the believers be edified, that the devil be terrified. So first, verse 13 declares, your sister church here in Babylon sends you greetings. It's good to greet one another. And again, we thank God for our friends in the faith. We had friends that came all the way here from Colorado Springs, Colorado, to help us open the church back up. Pastor Paul, Sister Estralita Nelson, we have friends in the faith. We have friends, uh, Pastor Jerome and Sister Rita Tolliver over at Eastside Baptist Church. We got friends in the faith down at Pilgrim's Rest Missionary Baptist Church. 
Pastor Tommy and First Lady Angela Williams. We got friends in the faith. Huh? Sam and Sister Linda Martin over at Heaven Sent. We got friends in the faith. Pastor Vassal and First Lady Vassal at Living Word of Faith. We got friends in the in the gospel. We got friends right here in Kansas City. We got friends throughout the country. We got friends all over the world. And as I say that I'm I'm talking about churches that, that call us, that support us, and, and we try to support them when we can. We look forward to the day the pandemic is lifted and we can fellowship one with another. Down to Bread of Life East, huh? Pastor Otis Collins, First Lady Collins, we got friends. Uh, I shouldn't be calling names. I'm going to leave somebody out and somebody going to be upset with me, but it's too late now. If I left your name out, charge it to my head and not to my heart. Because I know as soon as I get done, I'm going to think of some more friends that I love. Huh? Not just my family. Amen. But again, he said the church here at Babylon, that's how they jumped up in my spirit. Sends you greeting. Yeah, come on. And so on. does my son, Mark. Amen. Amen. It's on. good to have a son in the gospel. Amen. Yes. Somebody that you bringing up. Amen. Amen. Greet each other with a kiss of love. Amen. And since we know we can't be kissing on nobody during the pandemic, then just greet one another with love. Can we just greet each other with love? Hmm. And finally, the peace of God be with you all who are in Christ. Amen. Peace be with you all who are in Christ. God was in Christ Jesus, reconciling the world to himself, even on the cross. God was in Christ Jesus. So as we in Christ Jesus, God is in us. We in Christ Jesus. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Be reconciled one to another. For I reckon, as, as Paul said, I have died to self. It's not about me anymore. Self is no longer an issue. I pray to be patient. huh? Praying that you will receive the word of God. Praying that you would believe the word of God. Praying that we can all come together to the knowledge of the truth. Understanding that my life is hidden with God in Christ. We're talking about the peace of God on today. Huh? He that has ears, let him hear. I'm not, I'm not praying for my own peace. I'm praying for the peace of my family, my friends, all over the, the city, all over the country, all over the world, my friends, my family. I'm praying for you. Yes. Hmm? I pray for all that believe in Christ Jesus. Mm, I pray peace yes. for us all. Yes. This is an intercessory prayer huh? on behalf of others. Let us not be quick to pray for our own needs and our own desires while neglecting to intercede for others. Mm. The war of law says that you should love your neighbor as you love yourself, the second greatest of all the commandments. And if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, Jesus said on these two hang all the law and the prophets. If we can get that right, we can get it all right. But will you purpose in your heart today to intercede for someone in need? Huh? Yes, Lord. To pray for someone in need. The peace we pray for on today includes much more than just the absence of conflict. We're talking about the peace of God, the shalom of God that surpasses all understanding and it encompasses completeness. We're talking about being whole, nothing missing, nothing broken. Yes, Lord. We're talking about the peace of God. We're talking about health. He said, above all, I want you to prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Yes. We're talking about justice, yes. equality for all men, as we talk about the peace of God. Yes. We're talking about justice, liberty and justice for all. We're talking about the peace of God, the shalom of God. We're talking about prosperity. God says, I send my word that, that it might prosper in you where to I sent it. Amen. And we're talking about the protection of God on today. The protection of God. Nothing shall by any means harm you. Hmm? Who can lay a charge to God's elect? If God is for you, who can be against you? Huh? Well, the world can't give us this kind of peace. This is real peace that comes from having faith in God. Mm -hmm. God alone embodies all these characteristics of peace. For he is the prince of peace. He's Jehovah Shalom. 
in order to find this peace. Huh? Peace of mind. Peace within yourself. Peace with others. We must first find peace with God. Hmm? Who has believed our report on today? And to whom is the word of the Lord revealed? Peter's final word was, Amen. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. For the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, because you believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart we believe and with the mouth we confess to the saving of our soul. If you believe the report you heard on today, may God give peace to all those who are in Christ Jesus. May God give peace to all those that believe, to all the believers. Then let us pray a prayer of faith that says, Father God, I acknowledge your son. His name is Jesus. Lord Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. Forgive me for my sins. I believe that you were born. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that your blood covers my sins. I believe that you got up from the grave with all power in your hands. I ask you to come into my heart, come into my mind, come into my soul, come into my spirit, and live your life through me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming into my heart. In your precious name, Jesus, I pray. Let every heart say, Amen. 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 May the peace of God be with all of you that believe. Amen. This is the first Sunday of the month of October. So we want to do want to partake of the Holy Communion of God. Symbolizing the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I do want to give you an opportunity, amen, to, to get your drink, to get you some juice or, or some water, amen. And, and again, I recognize that the juice represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but as, as the, the, the uh, guards stuck the pierce, pierced our Lord and Savior's side, the Bible says that blood and water gushed out. Amen. So if I can't get my hands on some grape juice, I'm going to get me some water. Amen. And a piece of bread. Amen. For 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting with verse 23. And I give you an opportunity to get you some water, some juice, and some bread or a cracker. Paul said, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and after he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Drink this as often as you do in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you do recognize the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. So the Bible says, examine yourself. The Hebrew writer says, see if you are in the faith. And I pray, amen, that the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I pray that you heard the word of God on the day that calls you to believe. So again, we're going to ask God to, to bless our, our cup of communion and our bread of life, the cup representing the, the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and even the water that gushed out of his side and the bread representing the body that was broken. So before we partake, we'll pray over our communion. we we'll pray our Father's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So I thank God for my wife, my help me on today has got my communion here to me and She's partaking, and my daughter and my grandson are here, and I 
I do. I thank God for the household, and I pray that we understand, amen, and I pray for each and every household on today, each and every one of you. Pray for all the believers that the peace of God, the shalom of God will be with us. Again, we want to prepare to, to partake of the body that was broken for, for us, amen. Let us eat. We're praying for the, thank God for the blood that was shed on our behalf. And we all holding our eyes up high to remind ourselves that we're covered by the blood. Somebody say, I'm covered. Let us drink. Hallelujah. I thank God again for you on today. I do want to give you the opportunity, if you have in your heart, to sow a seed to Open Door Ministry. We are on Cash App, and our name on Cash App, again, that's a, a cell phone, uh, um, means to give a donation and sow a seed, and I pray that God will bless your seed a thousandfold in the name of Jesus. We're on Cash App. Uh, the uh, name is, you have to put a dollar sign first. And then it's ODM space donation. ODM capital letters, the capital D on donations. We also accept uh, check, cash, money orders, payable to Open Door Ministries, P.O. Box 46221, Kansas City, Missouri, 64134. And again, we pray that God will bless you above all that you could ask or think. Amen. Our email address is opendoorministries816 at gmail.com. If you want to join us uh, for a Zoom on Monday nights, just drop us an email. Or if you just want to send us a note, amen. We are on YouTube. Our YouTube address is Open Door Ministries KC. You can find us on Facebook under Rupert James Sr., uh, Reverend Gary Johnson on Fourth Sundays. And again, we thank God for each and every one of you. So before we prepare, as we prepare to dismiss from this place, but never from God's eyesight, we're praying for the love of God. We're praying for the grace and the mercy of his son, Jesus Christ. We're praying for the sweet communion, the fellowship, the power of the Holy Spirit to rest, to rule and abide in all of our hearts, our mind, our souls, our spirits, not only this day, but every day. In Jesus' name we pray, let every heart say, amen. Jude 24 and 25 declares, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you as faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever, amen. Praise God. Amen. Love you. Thank God for you. We look forward to Zoom on Monday night, and we look forward to uh, Sunday school slash Bible study on Wednesday night on the conference call. That number is 978-990-5000. Access code is 236-424. God be with you all. The peace of God be with you all. Amen. Amen.